This is the most iconic image with science on a sphere called the Blue Marble and was created in 2001 by taking imagery from the NASA Terra satellite over a period of several months. The original image, they were trying to come up with an image of the planet Earth, the entire planet that had no cloud cover on it. So they had to go through about four months of satellite passes before they got a complete clean view of the Earth to show it in this great detail. And then they have now, in this case, added on clouds. But that underlying blue model is used for many other models as well, including showing real-time weather. So in this case, we've taken the same blue model image of the Earth, and we're now pulling off information on weather of the last month. And this is showing real-time weather going from uh, late March to the current day. So I'm going to bring down our neck of the woods here into good view. Uh, this is now late March, first day of spring, and if we can speed things up here, we can actually show the progression of clouds across our area. So here we have the pile of the clouds that we had on the 15th and the 16th, the rainy weather that we had just a couple of days ago, and then the clearing that we have over the northeast as of today, the 18th. So among the other things about science atmosphere, it's really visually interesting. So this one here which shows sea surface, temperature, and current. Almost looks like a painting by Van Gogh. You're seeing where the orange areas are areas of warmer sea currents. The green and the yellow are cooler currents. And you can also trace the eddies. This is based on a NASA study trying to get a more accurate measurement and tracking of currents in the ocean. If you take the idea of showing where the ocean is warm, and then layer clouds like we saw a moment ago on top of that, you can create a model that in this case shows the hurricane season of 2005, the season of Katrina. So in this case, everything that's orange in the water is water warm enough to generate hurricanes, around 79 degrees or warmer. And then the clouds layered over that allow us to see the progression of different hurricanes that formed. Now we're about a month out from Katrina, which formed in late August of 2005. We'll see that form and you'll see the eye pass exactly over Louisiana as we get towards the end of August. And we're using this for modeling now, but we would use this also in cases where there was a current hurricane. So if you uh, now here, we'll see Katrina forming and the eye passing right over. So here we have the heart of it passing over Louisiana on the 29th of uh, August 2015. Again, the most active hurricane season in history. You can also, so there's just another real time. This is explaining, showing the uh, ice cover. And this again is real time from the last year. So here is the snow and ice pack you would have seen over North America last August. Obviously we're uh, free of snow and ice for most of North America here in the summertime, but then if we go into this winter that we just went through, uh, you can see the snow and ice coming down in, in, in massive amounts, basically, and hanging, lingering all the way until the end of March there. So we can help to illustrate Changes with the seasons, which is one of the things we're doing in one of our children's uh, programs that we do for school groups. Another thing that's very effectively demonstrated on this sphere are earthquakes. And so in this case, we're starting in 2001, we're going to 2015, and we're showing earthquakes around the planet. And in this case, the larger the circle, the greater the magnitude, and the color tells you how deep the earthquake is. You care about the depth of an earthquake in part because the deeper it is, the more likely it is to generate a tsunami. So we are currently in September of 2002. And what's happening as we trace these different earthquakes is that we're also tracing out the plate boundaries, since the majority of earthquakes occur along plate boundaries. If we were to go to March of 2011, Sorry, it'll be there in just a moment. If you look at Japan, the enormous earthquake and tsunami just occurred uh, March 11, 2011. And we combine that, uh, again, earthquakes are our primary driver for 
the, the primary driver for creating tsunami. So here we are coming again to March 11, 2011, and we're going to show the wave propagation of the waves that came from the tsunami generated by that Japanese earthquake. So the red are the heights, the blue are the troughs of the waves. And although this is used primarily to show global phenomena, we can also embed individual images to give folks an idea of the extent and impact. So in this case, we have images of uh, some of the destruction caused by that, the flooding caused by the Japanese tsunami in 2011. Of course, NOAA focuses primarily on our home planet, but NASA, who also does a lot of Earth research, also got in Boy Science and Sphere right away and so made all of its imagery available. So here, for example, is the sun in X-ray radiation. And the planet Jupiter, first of all, is a still, the famous red spot. And one of our two public shows we're going to be doing is going to be focusing on the planets when we debut next week. So. We'll you can have a planet experience both in here and also on, at the planetarium. And then a movie showing you the cloud motions of the planet Jupiter. So there are roughly 75,000 commercial flights every day around the world, and this is showing commercial airline traffic for an average day. So every little yellow squib is a flight, and you can get a sense of the great hubs of activity such as the East Coast and the West Coast coming around to Hawaii in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, an interesting observation about Hawaii is they don't allow flights to land in the middle of the night, so there'll be no airplanes landing between now, which is 2,400 hours or, or midnight, and about 6 in the morning, so all the flights come to an end there. This shows Facebook friendships. An intern at Facebook took uh, 10 million pairs of friends and mapped it on the globe. So what we're seeing here now are Facebook connections, not actually boundaries even of the continents. Like we haven't drawn the continents here, it's just drawing out where the Facebook friends are and you can see the high levels of activity throughout the United States. Uh, on the other hand, China virtually disappears because Facebook is rare to non-existent in China. So there's a empty space, although with India, for example, quite a bit of activity. Europe, of course, a blaze of activity with Facebook as well. And a number of areas in Africa as well. And tracing out the major population centers of South America as well. Again, by showing shipping routes in an average year, you can really see where the centers of activity are, such as, as at the Panama Canal. And so in an average year, there are this many voyages across the open ocean, for example. So anything that goes on a globe is going to work on here, right? So uh, that includes and the this thing, I can go on the globe. So I think one of my staff in Hawaii actually generated this one. I think it is time we demonstrated the full power of this station. Set your course for all the way. It's a very bad feeling of power. Uh. Space station. It's too big to be a space station. 